In this video, I'll show you how to implement Boss Stop in Unreal Engine 5. Boss Stop is a technique made famous by Masahiro Sakurai, the director of the Super Smash Bros. series and the early Kirby games. Boss Stop is made up of many different elements, such as dynamically switching the cameras, stopping and slowing down the game speed, using post-processing materials and dynamically spawning particle effects. Even if you don't plan on using this in your game, I believe you would benefit from coding along, since this video will teach you how to cleanly implement advanced blueprint functionality within an actor component. I'm starting from the third person character template and just added a few things to make the scene look more interesting. We'll first need a character to act as the boss. I prepared master hand for this, but you can simply make a duplicate of the third person character or use your own enemy character. Let's create a new actor blueprint component which will hold all the functionality of our boss stop. Right click in the content browser and select blueprint class. Then select actor component. The convention is to use the bpc underscore prefix for blueprint components. So I'll call it bpc boss stop. The reason we use an actor component is that we want the boss freeze functionality to be modular. This will make it more readable and allows us to use it across multiple projects without needing to remake it again from scratch. In the component we then create a custom event and call it start sequence. For now this will just print a string, so we can make sure everything is connected and being called properly. We then need to open up our active game mode, in this case the third person character game mode. In the component area we can then search for our BPC boss stop and add it to the game mode. The reason we want this component attached to the game mode and not a character is that the boss stop is something that will control the entire game to enforce things such as stopping or slowing down time and changing post processing settings. Open up the blueprint for your boss character. Add a node for begin play and make sure to also add a call to the parent function. We then want to get the game mode and cast it to our third person game mode. Then promote this to a variable to be able to access it later. After that create a custom event called die. Here we get our game mode and then call start sequence on our bpc boss stop component. For testing purposes we can then use a delay node with a 2 second delay on begin play to call the die function 2 seconds after starting the game. Eventually you'll want to call this when your boss's health goes down to 0. When starting the game you can see that our blueprint connection is now set up and the string is printed correctly. We first want to snap the camera to the boss in the moment it dies. Go back into the boss stop component. After the begin play event create a node for spawn actor from class and select the camera actor class. Right click on the transform and split the struct pin to use the default values. We'll adjust the position and rotation of the camera dynamically later on. Then promote the camera to a variable so we can access it later. Create a new function called snap cam to boss. This will need an input for the target actor which is our boss, so we can position the camera correctly. Back on start sequence we can now delete the print string and instead call snap cam to boss. We can simply drag off from the target actor to also create this input on the start sequence event. Back on the boss blueprint we then need to pass this value through to start sequence. The target actor is the boss so we can just pass a reference to self. Back in the snap cam to boss function we now want to position the camera between its current location and where the boss is. We then get a reference to our boss camera and call set actor location on it. We first need to get the location of the target actor and the camera. So we can get target actor and then get actor location. For the camera we can get player camera manager and then get camera location. We can then use the lerp node to get a location between these two. If the alpha is 0, the camera will be exactly in the location of A. If it's 1, it will be in the position of B. Let's use 0.5 for now to get the position exactly in the middle between our target and the camera. To switch the camera we need to get player controller of index 0 for player 1. Then we use set view target with blend to switch the active camera. The new view target should be our boss camera. We want this to be instant, so we'll leave blend time at 
When we start the game now, you can see that the active camera will switch and we are positioned between the player and the boss. However, we have these black bars and aren't facing in the right direction. To get rid of the black bars, we go back to the begin play of our boss top component. After instantiating the boss camera, we want to call set constraint aspect ratio and set it to false. This will fix the black bars. After that we go back to the snap cam to boss function. Here we want to create some space before switching the boss camera to active. We want to set active rotation on the boss camera. We'll need the location of our target actor and camera again, so we can copy paste these nodes. To get the rotation we then use the find look at rotation node, which will give us the rotation we need to point at the boss. Since we want to look from the position of the camera to the position of the boss, we need to flip these values so the boss goes into the target pin and the camera into start. When starting the game now you can see that we're looking towards the boss. But we want to be able to easily adjust the camera distance, so let's go back to where we set the position of the camera. You can simply drag the line from the alpha pin to the function node to create a new input. Then call it distance alpha. After compiling you are able to cut the connection and just type distance alpha to get access to the variable and keep things cleaner. We can also set a default value of 0.5 here as the base. On start sequence we can again create this input and set the default value. Now we're able to easily change the distance right where we call start sequence on our boss. Again, having a value close to 1 will keep the camera in the original position and having a value close to 0 will bring it closer to the boss. I think for this character 0.3 is about right. I'll move on to using Masterhand for the rest of the tutorial, but you can keep using the mannequin. Let's get into managing time. When boss stop happens we want to completely freeze the player and the boss. But we still want effects to play in the background. For that reason we can't simply stop the time on the entire game, but rather want to just stop it on our two characters. In our boss stop component we want to create a new custom event and call it manage time. Then we call it from start sequence. On manage time we need to create an input for the actors we want to affect. Make it of type actor and call it affected actors. Then change it to an array since we want to pass multiple actors. We can then make an array here and pass the target actor we get from the start sequence. We then want to add another item to the array and connect it to start sequence. This will be our attacking actor or player. When we call start sequence on our boss we can then get the player through get player pawn with the index of 0 for player 1. On manage time we now have access to both our actors and want to loop over the array with a for each loop. On the array element we can then set custom time dilation to 0.0, .0 to basically freeze the boss and the player in time. After freezing for about a second though we want to unfreeze them again and only slow them down which we need a delay for. But before that let's collapse the looping and setting of the dilation to a function. This will still do the same thing but it'll make it easier for us to manage our nodes. We can then just add a delay of 1 second and then again set dilation on all our actors. But this time set it to 0.4 to just slow them down instead of completely freezing them. You can see that they now go from being frozen to just being slowed. We can then again set another delay of about 2 seconds and then set the dilation back to 1, which will make them run at regular speed again. But just writing values like these isn't good practice since it makes them hard to update. So we can just connect these pins to manage time to create a new input and name them properly.
We then also want to set the default values. And then do the same thing on start sequence. Again, this will allow us to easily update these values later on. Here where our freeze stops and our time slows down, we can get player controller and call set view target with blend on it to switch back to our original camera. The view target should be our player, so we can get player pawn, which will tell the node to blend to the camera which is attached to our third person character. We can see that the camera now switches after the freeze is over. However, we want to make this a bit smoother and make the blend duration the same as our slowdown. We can simply plug the value from slow duration into blend time. This will make for a really nice and smooth transition. In Smash Bros, when the boss stop kicks in, the stage, sky sphere and everything except for the characters will become invisible. This was something I actually struggled with a lot while prototyping this project since I'm not a wizard with material notes, so if you have any suggestions on how to improve this, please let me know in the comments and I might pin it. We first need to go into the project settings and search for post process. Look for custom depth stencil pass and set it to enabled with stencil. To demonstrate what this does, we can go to the view mode options, buffer visualization and select custom stencil. You can then select your boss and look for the skeletal mesh on it. Then search for custom depth. Enable render custom depth and set the stencil to 1. You can see that our boss is now separated from all the other objects in the scene. Create a new folder for your materials and open it up. Create a new material and call it PPM Boss Stop. For the material domain we need to select Post Process. If you don't really care about the node setup, you can just copy and paste it from the snippet in the description below, otherwise keep following my lead. We need to create two scene texture nodes. The first one is for post processing input 0. This will be our scene before any post processing is applied and can be used to get the regular colors of our scene for the pixels we want to display unaltered. The second one is custom stencil and will give us the position of the pixels of our meshes with a custom stencil. In this case the pixels for the boss. On the post process input 0 we want to create a component mask and only use the RGB since we don't need the alpha. On the custom stencil we only need the red channel. We then clamp this to make sure it never goes below 0 or over 1. We can then hold the L key and left click to create a lerp node. The top mask which has a regular colors goes into the B pin. The custom stencil will act as a mask and is therefore used as the alpha. While holding the 3 key on the keyboard left click to create a vector 3 color node. Convert this to a parameter to make it easier to update. This will be the color of all the hidden objects in the scene which I'll just leave as black. Locate the material in your content browser and right click it to create a material instance. Call this PPMI bus stop. Look for the post processing volume in your world outliner. If you don't already have one, make sure to add a new one to your world. Search for array to find the array of post process materials. Add a new one and choose asset reference. Look for PPMI boss stop which we just created. You can see that now only our boss is visible in the scene. But if you look closely at the edges, you can see some flickering. We can go back into the material and select the main node. Scroll down until we find blendable location and set this to before tone mapping. 
Now you can see that we get very sharp edges and no more flickering. But if you move into a position where the map or our player is blocking the view to the boss, you'll see that it's not a perfect solution. As far as I'm aware of, the only way to render a custom stencil objects always in the foreground would be to render them in a different scene and stream that result to a texture, like many shooter games are doing to prevent the weapon from clipping into the walls. However, that is a pretty complex method and out of scope for this video. We'll implement a different method for getting rid of the foreground objects later, but first we want to turn our custom material on and off through blueprints. Let's go to the post-process volume in the world outliner and remove our material from the array again. On our boss we can also go to the mesh and remove the custom depth settings again since we'll apply these programmatically. Go to the boss stop component and find the begin play event. Add a sequence here so we can keep things more organized. Add a get actor of class node and select the post process volume. Promote the return value to a variable and call it pp volume. Execute an is valid check on it. In the case it's invalid, we'll print a string to display a warning that lets us know we need to add a post process volume to the world. Create a new function called setPPMaterial. We need a boolean input and call it setActive. Get a reference to the pp volume and then get settings from it. We then want to call set members on it, which will allow us to only change certain values in the settings struct. Search for materials and add a checkmark for post process materials. This will add a new pin to our node. Drag a line from post process materials and make weighted blendables. Then make array. Drag a line from the zero index and make weighted blendable. This will allow us to create sets of weight values and a material. For the object select PPMI boss stop. The weight value will allow us to set the influence of the material. For this material it can only be off with the value zero or on with the value one. Create a select node for the weight and use set active as the index. True should set this to active, so input 1.0. False is already 0.0, .0 which is correct. Go back to start sequence and call it set pp material. Make sure set active is checked. This will set our materials when the boss stop starts. In the manage time event, we then want to find the place where we switch back to the original player camera and call set pp material here. But this time set active needs to be false. This will deactivate our post process material and display all objects again. When we start the game now, you can see the screen turn black when the boss freeze starts. If you pause the game and look at the post process material, you can see how the settings are being influenced by the blueprint. But we still need to set the custom stencil and depth on our meshes. Create a new function called apply depth to meshes. It needs an input that is an actor array called affected actors. Call this function on the start sequence event. And connect the array with our boss and player. Call a for each loop on the actor array. We need to find all the meshes of the actor, so get components by class on the array element. And select static mesh. Then add another for each loop here. Set render custom depth on the array element to true and set the custom stencil value to 1. Then make another node for get components by class. This time select skeletal mesh. And run another for each loop. 
Execute this from the completed pin on the static mesh loop. Then just copy paste the two nodes from the top to set the custom depth and stencil value. When you start the game now we can see that only our boss and the character is being shown. But like I said before we run into issues if another object is in front of our boss or player. There are multiple ways we could go about fixing this issue but they all come with their own pros and cons. I opted for just doing a simple box trace and hiding objects that are blocking our view. This works perfectly fine for stages that don't have a lot going on, like most Smash Bros maps would. But it isn't a great solution for maps with many objects in them. So feel free to apply a different method here if that is required for your game. Create a new function and call it Hide Meshes. This will need an input of target actor which is our boss. Call this function from start sequence. We'll first need to get the location of our boss camera and target actor. Do a multi-box trace for objects. The start is our camera location and the end is our target actor location. The half size should be about 2000 for X, Y and Z. Then add the find look at rotation node and connect the boss camera and target actor location. Make an array for the object types to check for. This might differ depending on your project, but I'll add world static, world dynamic and physics body. Set draw debug type to for duration for testing purposes. You can see that we're now drawing a box trace and detecting all these items with the red marks on them. After the trace, run a for each loop on the out hits array and break the array element. Create a new variable, turn it into an array of actors and call it hidden actors. We'll save all our hidden actors here so we can later make them visible again. Call add on the hidden actors array and connect the hit actor to the node. Call set hidden in game on the hit actor and set new hidden to true. You can see that all the stage actors are now being hidden, but in my case also the player. This might only happen on my end though because of the hat and mustache. Regardless though we should make sure that the trace ignores our boss and player. Back in the hide meshes function add an input of actor array and call it actors to ignore. Then on the start sequence connect our array of affected actors to this input. When we compile and save, we can then just drag off from actors to ignore on the trace and input actors to ignore to use our local variable. Now only our desired actors are visible, but we still need to make everything else visible again after the boss stop is over. Create a new function and call the reset hidden actors. Get the hidden actors array and do a for each loop on it. Call set actor hidden in game on the array element and set it to false. After the loop is completed, call clear on the hidden actors array. Go to the manage time event. We should call this function after set pp material. Now the actors are displaying and appearing with the correct timing. Next we want to add a few particle effects. If you've been using Unreal Engine for a while, you should probably have some explosion effects in your library even if you don't have the exact packs I'm using. Add another function to the boss stop component and call it spawn effects. 
add an input for the target actor. Also call this function from start sequence. Back in the spawn effects function add the spawn emitter at location node. From the emitter template select an explosion effect of your liking. If nothing shows up here make sure to get a package from the marketplace and add it to the project or use something from the story content. Get the actor location of our target actor and add a plus node to the return value. Connect this to the spawn location. Get the actor location of the boss camera and of the target actor. Then find the look at rotation and get the forward actor. Connect the multiply node to the return value. Convert the pin to a float and set the value to 500 for now to offset the explosion and place it 500 units behind the boss. Promote this value to a variable and call it effect distance. Adjust the scale to make the explosion bigger. I also have another asset pack for warp tunnels which looks pretty similar to the effect used in Smash Bros. This was a free asset of the month back in 2020 so you might already have this in your library. But if you don't have anything similar you can skip this section since it's optional. Add a node for spawn actor from class. I'll select BP Warp Red as my effect. Split the struct pin for the transform to expose the location, rotation and scale. We'll need to get the location of our boss camera and target actor, so we can copy and paste these nodes over. Add both of these locations together and then divide them by 2 to get the middle point. Get the look at rotation from these two locations and use it as the spawn rotation. The warp tunnel is a bit too small, so I'll scale it up a little bit. Promote the warp tunnel to a variable so we can access it in other places. Go to the manage time event and clear some space after reset hidden actors. Then call destroy actor on the warp effect. This will also delete the warp effect when we switch the camera again. We can now stop drawing the debug lines for the box trace. I then also added a sound effect when we spawn the particle effect. As a little extra I then just added a few simple notes to launch the boss and play a smoke effect after the boss is defeated. Since we created the boss stop in a modular fashion it's pretty easy to turn this into a plugin and use it across multiple different projects. But that is a bit out of scope for this video and I have plans to make a separate video about plugin creation and blueprint reusability. As you can see this effect can work in many different situations and even works with 2D sprites and a sideways camera. Since you know all about boss stop now, how about you check out my video about hit stop which is another technique that can add a lot of impact to your games.